Uh, yeah, yeah, the crafts, the the crafts that I've seen, uh, I've seen a couple in 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 physical. It's like. Um... <laughs> Welcome everyone. Today we have a very special guest Robert Fullington has had amazing lifelong encounters with extra extraterrestrial life. Some might even be even extraterrestrial soul family on a consciousness level making contact with him. We are honored by his presence thank you for allowing us to ask following questions and for you to share your experience with us. A rundown on Robert's biography quickly Robert Fullington served briefly in the U.S. Army before returning to civilian life and another career now focusing on the paint trade. At age 28 through a process dramatic awakening he came to understand that he is a neat human hybrid. A mantis beings called Kaka Arush has been interacting with him accelerated his ongoing process with the ET and understanding of consciousness. During that time. He underwent some extreme physical and physiological changes as well as radical spiritual, philosophical and creative development advancement. He began to receive downloads and knowledge of designs for 2D and 3D images and objects he terms a consciousness amplifying technologies, the purpose of which is to help people accelerate their personal growth. Robert feels that the physical changes and adjustments he underwent allowed him to work with more advanced visualization, and receive these downloaded designs. Other features Robert has been featured. In 2015 he shared his experiences with Miguel Mindanatilda Section A and Barbara Lamb in the book Meet the Hybrids, The Lives and Missions of ET Ambassadors on Earth. In 2016 he joined Barbara and five of the hybrids from the book on stage at the International UFO Congress to share some of his experiences and perspectives. He's featured in We Are Disclosure, and Being with a Being by Miguel Mendonatilda Section A. He also was featured in the J3 Films documentary called Extraordinary, the seating where through in-depth harrowing interviews with contactees and frank conversations with ufology experts, Extraordinary, the seating explores alien hybridization programs, why they're happening and their impact on humanity. Robert also appeared in an episode of Ancient Aliens called Project Hybrid which aired on August 9, 2019, and UFO Witness on Discovery Plus. You can purchase Meet the Hybrids, The Lives and Missions of ET Ambassadors on Earth, The Disclosure Series, on Amazon. Robert Fullington thank you for allowing me to do this interview and taking time out of your day to let myself and my viewers insight into your amazing experiences with your encounters with these extraterrestrial the Kaka Arash Mantids begins and others. Could you tell us a bit about the craft you have seen and been on? What did it look like and what did it look like from the inside did you see? Who was piloting or got a chance to interface and engage with either the craft or beings in the ship? Materials? Did you feel like the craft itself was alive? Did you feel like the craft would read your mind also and anticipate your thoughts? Uh, yeah, yeah, the crafts, the, the crafts that I've seen, uh, I've seen a couple in, in, in physical. It's like um, uh, a giant triangle the size of a house. You know, it's like, um, I don't know which, which race it was that that had that giant triangle that I saw. It was like a, uh, I mean, I guess you can call them the Anunnaki if you want to. Giant, you know, giants, uh, like eight, eight feet tall, nine feet tall, something like that. Um, but this giant black triangle, right? And there's, um, if anybody knows what a canister light is, you know, that hangs up inside of your bathroom, on the on the back of the craft on the bottom underside of it 
it's got uh, three sets of three, right? So it goes three, three, and three on the back. And then on the front, there's three and three. So two sets of three, and then three sets of three. And it's this canistered looking lights. It's even got the concentric rings coming going into it. And then a pyramid coming out. And uh, get the sun in the face here. And then um, uh, a triangle pyramid coming down and then like a black hole. The best I can describe is like a black hole. Just like darkest of dark sphere with this purple glowing purple plasma you know they are able to turn it off and turn it on you can see this like plasma like going around it and then they just like leak plasma out and it swirl around the the canisters and make like a bar so it looked like this blue bar right and it was like the ship would be like floating on that and then the other two so it'd be like a small blue bar and a long blue bar and this thing went over my head probably about like I don't know, I could have hit it with I could hit it with a rock, you know. If I threw threw one at it, it was that close, and you know, flying overhead, it's got these weird, like, weird shapes underneath, like, geometric shapes, lines in the triangle, and then uh, it was like a black, purple, crystal-looking thing, right? And when when the sh the ship is like this, you see this giant triangle about the size of a house, and when it when it's looking at you like this. It uh, it's almost flat. It's only like a couple feet uh, high. You know, it's like really, really, really thin, and it um, had had uh, would had lighting on it. Uh, you know, doing the craziest things. You know, zipping around. You know, go, going from like zero to thousands of miles an hour. You know, uh, zapping us with green lasers and and. Uh, uh, it, when it would sometimes when it moved, it sound like a giant whip because it just it's just like ripping the the sky open is the best way I can describe it. And uh, you know that thing interacted with us about forty five minutes. I ended up getting a picture off of that. Well, my wife got the picture off. You know she's trying to take the picture, and every time she goes to click it, the camera battery goes to zero. And finally, she gets a shot off, and the flash goes off. Well, the two beings that were across the street trans were caught transporting back to the craft and the craft is off in the distance when it did it turned around uh flew hovered over the house charged up you can hear it and then flash 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 you know i had a, a 85 i rock camaro at the time you can hear the metal just like twisting and warping it's all crunch crunch pop 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 uh so yeah there's that there's that one um i've seen the like a uh, like the bell, sh I've seen the bell shaped one, and it's just like a, it looks like an ac flying acorn. And it underneath it has the three, uh, I can just call them plasma generators for, for lack of a better word, you know, trying to describe something that technically doesn't exist, right? It's not, not too easy. So, it's like an acorn with uh, uh, the three on the bottom of it, and you'll I got a picture of that one, it's flying around like this uh with with that craft we were driving down driving down the road and uh, coming home from a hockey game and i i was um uh, trying an experiment because you know i wanted to make contact and i thought well there's a lot of energy when a goal scores so i'll put out the energy and like when everyone shouts i'd be like oh hey i'm here i, I guess i got their attention that day because i'm driving home and i raced a I raced a Corvette, you know, I'm in a, um, at the time we had a, uh, uh, little Volkswagen race, race car type thing. And, um, uh, Corvette kicked, kicked my butt. We're doing like 120 miles an hour and they kicked my butt. But then I got this, um, I got this feeling like, okay, go down this road. So on the way home, I went this back way, you know, towards my, uh, that drove by my parents' house. Oh, I didn't. I didn't live at my parents' house, but this this back road goes to their house, and um, uh, all of a sudden, this you know we had a we had a sunroof. Not in this car that I'm in now, but we had a sunroof in that car, and the the craft flies over the car, right? And 
this is ball of light. And we're like, oh, did you see that? What was that? Oh, get the camera, get the camera. So my wife gets the camera out and starts taking pictures. And uh, at that time, two balls of light just zoom by the zip by the car and she got a picture of them, these two balls of light zipping by the car and went back to the ship and I always kind of felt like they were kind of like playing this game you know where like I was racing so like they were racing me kind of deal because they they overtook me went in front and then uh to the ship and we ended up I pulled over and the, the ship was dancing around me and uh when another car would come, it'd go up to the, um, uh, it'd go up to the mountain top, you know, with the collision lights, and it would turn off, and you can still see it. And then the car left, you know. I freaked out at the time. I I didn't, you know, I didn't know what the heck was going on. I freaked out. Went to my parents' house and was like, "Oh my God, you won't believe what just happened!" You know, the thing followed us to my parents' house, and then took off. So my parents didn't even see it, but. Um, other other craft, you know, like. Um, you know, like I said, the inside of them, kind of like a dome. There's really not much to them. Uh, we've had, um, like the inside of, like, the, like I said, the underground facility. And uh, those are about the only ones that I've, oh, this is balls, mostly just balls of light. You know, just ball of light in the sky. Um, and whatever, whatever that's about, you know, just some other dimensional uh, vehicle manifesting in our in our reality is light which begins have you seen close up what did they look like what were they wearing did they have any technology or devices on them did they ever talk to you vocally what did they sound like did they telepathically show you any star charts or did they send symbols that contain emotion and meaning and intent all in one symbol did they ever take you for a ride to another place, to a base, or, or deep space? Did you see the craft go transdimensional? Did you ever go on board their deep space crafts were the interior bigger inside? Any riding you saw on the ships or in the ships? Was there an intimate connection with you and any of the bins that visit you? What did you sense or feel? When you noticed the reptilian holographic image overlay of a human face, did it notice you first or did you notice it first? What was the feeling or any? psychological sensation you felt or your first initial reaction or thought what was your gut feeling about it any smell would differ from it from a human what did the reptilian look like did it notice you when you saw its holographic device has glitched throughout your interaction with these begins did you see a unifying symbol such as a common insignia or something that stands out either about their interaction with you did they let you know why these events were happening and any other hybrids that was been taken and tested on? You know, they do... Um, most of them are naked, you know, that I've, that I've seen mantis beings are always naked. And then, you know, the, um, uh, the little goloids, they, they wear the black jumpsuits. And then, of course, the other guys that wear the blue jumpsuits. And then I've seen the orange orange ones, too. It's made out of the same material. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's like a spandex of some kind. I mean, if I've never seen anything like it on Earth to describe it to anybody, but the best way they can do is like a, is like a spandex of some sort. Um, skin tight stuff. Uh, it, they all do have an insignia. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you what it was. I mean, this is one of the details I really wasn't paying attention to, to be honest with you. Um, as far as why it was happening, uh, I still don't understand why, why it's happening, but there's something going on. Um, you know, of course there's the event coming up with, with the galactic bubble, uh, bursting. Um, there's the, you know, possibility of myself being one of them in, in a, in a human body. And that's why it happens to me. And um, uh, I haven't. I've I've seen some other kind of hybrid things going on. Like I said with the greys, um, I think they're kind of confused there on what that is. I, um, but most is just like others like me that's going through some weird stuff. Um, there's something going on there as far as as, as soul as a human soul goes um 
I guess you wouldn't say a human soul then. It'd be, we'd have more of a one of their souls. And um, but I don't understand. I don't understand the the why a hundred percent. You know. Yeah, the beings that I've seen close up, uh, I've seen um, uh, the mantis being. I've seen uh, they're they're like a they they look like a now I know there is an insect one out there. I've never seen the the one that looks just like an insect. The one I've seen is kind of like a shaped like a praying mantis, but it's like a cross between a um. I felt like it was more amphibian, you know, like, uh, it just, it just so happens to look like a, a praying mantis, but it's more, uh, amphibian than it is insect. So it's like a cross between an, uh, a praying mantis, uh, a salamander and, uh, and a human. It's just kind of like how they look there. They're like six, six, seven feet tall. Um, they have, you know, the long neck the the face that looks like a mantis. I asked them once if they had any teeth, and uh, they they gave me a smile, and they showed me they had these like flat teeth, and um, they got these massive massive forearms, right? And and their you know the wrist you know bend at a complete angle, right? And the fingers go down all the way down to their elbows, but these massive. Uh, forearms with this like really wrinkly skin that looks elastic like if you like if you pull it it'd pull all the way out and 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 pop back you know um you know kind of skinny arms a uh, long kind of like a long torso with like a like a pot belly you know with little, i remember seeing little fat rolls on them and they you know the little guy, the guy's got fat rolls on them that's that's funny uh white like a white chest that the white goes up up the neck and then green a green head and then green back um and then green on their green arms and fingers uh with that with this but same buttery soft looking skid uh the then there's the what i was calling the goloids they um they're kind of like a a, a small head with like lines down on their face the almond eyes uh, grayish skin, uh, wrinkly, wrinkly necks. They wear uh, a black, black jumpsuit. Um, you know, with like three fingers. They're only like four, three, four feet, three and a half, four, three, four, three and a half, four feet tall. Uh, they're pretty small. Um, then there's the uh, um, the Draco reptilian, which it looks just like a gigantic monitor lizard. Um, you know, big snout, um, just completely ripped, you know, beastly looking thing, um, tail, uh, it, it, I mean, it's just like a, like a, like a walking monitor, giant hyper intelligent monitor lizard. Um, and they would just be kind of wearing like a, like an armor, you know? Kind of like some type of armor, best way best way I can describe it. Then there's the um, uh, you know what some people would would could call a Pleiadian or uh, a Nordic being, right? Uh, that they call themselves the Galactic Federation. Like these are the ones with the uh, that do the holographic image overlay. Uh, they have the blue jumpsuit, you know, like I'm saying and. Um, Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, but, um, yeah, there's something, there's something nefarious going on there. Then there's these little tiny reptilians, uh, they're kind of like a elongated skull and they're only like three or four feet, but they, they don't, I've only seen them like once that I can recall, um, really sharp claws on them. You know, uh, I've come back with just claw marks all over me and, uh, uh, they just seem to be the ones that, uh, I don't want to use the word, that I would say they're, um, workers. Yeah, we'll call, we'll call them, we'll call them workers, you know. Um, they're, then the tall white Z, what some would call a tall white Zeta, which is, you know, big light bulb head, giant eyes, 
um, stereotypical looking ET kind of spindly three three fingers like that you know with long fingers and uh, the, with the cuticle goes goes up further on their fingers and fingernails uh, pale pale white skin uh, no clothes on them genitalia wise I wasn't looking or paying attention to that I was more like oh shit what the what the heck is going on here well hi there you know um and then uh and then these little other little guys that I have no idea like um oh what are those little guys in Star Wars and tiny red robes something like that very similar and they they seem kind of playful they then too kind of felt like on the mantis being ships they um um did things around whatever it was um I have had, uh, you know, you know, inside the one craft that I remember well, I've had the um, a one time where, you know, seeing the same mushroom table and one, the one being there's always like, uh, like two of these Zetas, and then there'll be one, always there that's kind of like trying to disguise itself as a as a person, that, and it's not pulling it off very well. Um, but we, around that same kind of like mushroom, crystal mushroom table, and uh, one would say, hey, do you know that you're inside of a, a mothership right now? And the other one would say, tell, like, say to the other one, oh, you're not, you're not supposed to say that to them. And then, poof, you know, black out. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there's not much, there's not much to, to the crafts. What did you sense anything different in terms of energetics? Frequencies, intent, friendliness, nature, motives of the of the greys, reptilians or mantis. Which ones did you have in contact with more? And which one do you feel is more advanced in terms of technology wise and which one is more powerful in their psychic mind to mind? Abilities that you feel? What are the main differences between these races in terms of intent and abilities? Have you ever felt that they have screen printed something on you that you weren't allowed to see or had the sense something was more to what you saw? Could you tell us a bit about the craft you have seen and been on? What did it look like and what did it look like from the inside did you see? Who was piloting or got a chance to interface and engage with either the craft or beings in the ship? Materials? Did you feel like the craft itself was alive? Did you feel like the craft would read your mind also and anticipate your thoughts? So the, the story of the, um, uh, uh, rep the one reptilian with the with the um, you know that look look like what some people would call a Pleiadian was I you know a lot of the experience that happens just like all of a sudden it's happening right uh, I go to I go to bed and then it's happening the way you can tell that it's not a dream because it's um, it has all the textures to it you know um, sight smell uh, uh, touch you know you got all the you got all the senses there and uh, I just kind of like was walking down into through down this hallway it's like a cor uh, corridor it's clearly underground uh, <coughs> and <coughs> I like had a liaison with me and these other beings were walking by and I when the other beings look walking by they were just like looking at me and I felt like they were looking at me with uh, like I didn't get a good vibe from him. I just something didn't feel right, like in my stomach. It was like something's wrong here, uh, and I I don't know what it is. But this guy that I'm with seems pretty nice, you know. And he was, you know, the blue jumpsuit the whole thing. And all of a sudden, I see this like digital, like you know, when when you're watching a movie or something, and your your internet's lagging and the you know, digital distortion. It was like that on the face. It's digital distortion. And through you can see that it was uh, a reptilian behind that, and the eye. You know, I remember seeing the eye was like this um, big old eye with this bright yellow you know, iris with a with a slit in in the center of it. And I was like, remember going, oh, oh man, uh, you know, just let's just kind of uh, play that off like I didn't see that right, and. Uh, we keep going, we go into this one room, and uh, 
it had like God, I got like my computers kind of like along the wall with like these beings like working on them, and then there was this weird geometric box that that they had there, and uh, the, the guy said, "Well, oh, here's so here's the uh, uh, learning chamber. They call it the learning chambers." You know, I'm sure some people would, would refer to them back in the days. You've heard about the Ascension Chambers, right? Anyways, um, well, this is the Learning Chamber. So you're supposed to go inside of here and you're downloaded with the Knowledge of the Universe. And I was like, well, that, I don't know, it just didn't feel right. You know, I was like, this, isn't, this just doesn't feel right. Um, so we keep going and then he shows me a room with all these glass tubes and these, like, creatures inside the tubes. They're like, I mean, they look like the... Um, uh, the Zetas in the tube. I kind of have a little theory about what those are um, and what people would call the Tallways that I think they're these clone beings uh, from the reptiles, reptilians, and I have a sneaking suspicion that they're powered by um, human souls, you know. Uh, total speculation on my part there. I am not 100% sure on that, but I have a feeling that, because I've woken up in one of those tubes before, but not to get off of this in particular experience. Um, this tube, these all these little tubes lining up the walls, uh, in the in the ground, and just glowing this bluish glow in there, and these things just stick inside of there. And they said, "This is the cloning chambers." <laughs> that doesn't sound cool, man. Doesn't look cool. Doesn't sound cool, you know. Um, uh, it was like they were giving me a tour of the facility and trying to get me to be a, a contactee of this. Uh, what I call the so-called Galactic Federation of Light, right? Because there's nothing, nothing light about it, except for this uh, uh, illusion of light. Um, then they take me into the uh, back room, another broom chamber, and there's these machines going down the um, the wall there, and there's these beings like plugged into it with these wires coming out of the back of their head, uh, something like out of a if you, uh, Geiger, I think his name, the guy does the uh, alien, aliens art, something like that, where these, these wires coming out, tubes and stuff coming out of the back of these beings' head, and they're all atrofed, you know, they, they almost look like a little atrofed mantis being, can I tell you the truth, pink, pink skin, wrinkly, and um, they didn't move, they didn't talk, they were just plugged into the machines, and they said, these are the what we call the controllers, and this is where all the channeled messages of hope come from. And they said, well, we use, you know, they use the, uh, the names that they use is like Ashtar Command, uh, Archangel, whatever, Michael, you know. Um, yeah, so that's where a lot of the channeled messages come through. And I about had enough there. And I said, you know what, I'm, I don't want any part of, of what's going on here. So, you know, poof, I, I out and... Uh, woke up home, I remember thinking, oh shit, there's a lot of people out there that are um, uh, bought into this false light uh, beings. And, mm, yeah, something, something's not right there. With your implants, did you ever feel they could watch you through your eyes with those implants and locate you anywhere and also would they be able to take control of you if needed? Do you ever feel the implants themselves are alive and react to situations? When did you did you and how did you find these implants? Any testings have been done with these implants? When did you think they were first place at what age? In any of the regressions what did you see and what were they trying? To stop you from seeing or noticing, what do you think all this testing and experimentation is for? And preparing you or the Earth's civilization for? What are your thoughts about these beings? After your various interaction with them, is there anything else you'd like to share with us might have been left out? Uh, so my my first my first memory of uh, actually being on the craft, I was about 20, 29 years old. That's when everything started. That's when um, you know, my most hardcore experiences uh, really happened. And uh, I don't I don't necessarily remember any kind of like. Uh, schools or um, seeing too many other people that often you know on a rare occasion I would see other people um, th there was like uh, the only time I saw other people this one time was uh, um, there was a 
uh, I was in my pajamas, right? And I was wearing these like, um, you know, 20, like I said, 29 years old. I'm wearing my uh, orange uh, pajamas with like, if I had like stop signs and cars and, and, you know, things like that one way only kind of stuff on it. And, uh, you know, at Walmart pajamas. And then a, um, uh, the white, a white uh, t-shirt that I went to bed in. And I remember seeing a girl, uh, she was in the corner of this like room and she was just rocking back and forth. And I can tell that she was really scared. And, um, I, I put my hand on her and, you know, and I was like, Hey, you know, everything, you're fine. Everything's going to be okay. And they, um, one, one of the mantis being came up behind me and I said, well, Hey, it's like, Hey, what's, what's going, what's going on here, man. And, uh, the beings like, you know, we're, we're using, they told me that they were using me, uh, they were using me so that way they could um, understand the emotions of what the girl was going through. So it was almost like I was uh, was a, an emotional translator for them of some sort. The best way I can describe it. <laughs> it sounds weird, but and then um, uh, one time during a like a, a medical examination uh it was like by by a reptilian group uh being on a on a like a table and um seeing other people uh laying next to me also getting worked on um they uh the people next to me i just remember like seeing the guy looking over me in, in total total fear he, he's like was no expression on his face and uh it almost seemed like he wasn't even alive to be honest with you i just remember him staring staring at me um while while he was being worked on by by these beings but um i never, never got a good feeling from those guys the little they're like little uh some kind of little reptoid you know like really sharp claws it seemed like they were more of like a a, a, a worker I always got the feeling those little guys were like workers of some kind um, I got the uh, two implants under kind of like under my tongue uh, one's like a little grain of rice and the other one's like a BB uh, they're non-metallic uh, so some kind some sort of I don't know what would you call it bio some kind of bio material uh I don't I'm never gonna have them looked at or taken out because I don't know I feel I've always felt like if I did um it would be it probably would be bad for my health kind of deal uh, it's, uh I always felt like they were kind of state uh, some kind of vibrational stabilizers it sounds as crazy as that sounds um I think it just has something to do with uh uh, something to do with, with balancing my own energies out as far as my consciousness and this body being being out of balance um, there's been some testing every once in a while they'll be they'll become magnetic uh, I've had I had them where they you know stick magnets that they do flip around sometimes you feel them spinning or they'll kind of stick you know they'll they'll unseat themselves and It'll, it'll feel kind of, um, uh, it'd feel really weird. But as far as um, uh, anything about those, I, I don't know. I don't know, and I probably probably won't ever find out what that is either. As far as, as, far as feeling anything uh, different between the different ETs, I'd, I'd definitely say there's a, uh, there's a difference to, to the different ones out there. Uh, the mantis beings do seem like they have a... Um, a position of um, being kind of like in charge of things uh, they're really old they uh, they can be kind of playful somewhat friendly I, I think they're kind of ne uh, neutrally balanced um, but I definitely feel more more of a connection with them uh, the reptilians there's a couple different ones with different uh, feeling to them uh, like a, you know the big big draco i've seen um a couple times uh they tend to feel kind of um 
very proud, you know, really proud and stern and serious, like don't mess around um, around these guys, you know. A uh, lot of res got to, you know, come at them with respect and stuff, but uh, uh, very strong and, and powerful kind of feel to them. And then there's these, um, like, lime, like a lime green one and, and, and a brown one that, uh, I mean, they look just like a person. You know, you wouldn't be able to tell. A good-looking person, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, um, uh, wearing these blue jumpsuits and stuff. And uh, but, but they use a holographic technology to give them that look so it looks like they're, they can shapeshift, but it's actually a, a hyper-advanced uh, holographic. And they, they have this... Uh, this deception feeling to them like uh they kind of like want to tell you everything but then there's this like underlying tone of like i don't i just don't trust them right um the the grays like um you know the little grays would could be kind of with a, the same as a mantis being because the mantis being would would use their consciousness into these little biomechanical robots now the other other the other grays you know ones with the big heads that you would call, uh, I guess some would call a, a Zeta Reticulin, what some people would call. Uh, they're, they're, they're scary. You know, they have no emotions whatsoever. I mean, none whatsoever. Uh, they would do, like it was explained to me, they would, they only care about the advancement of their species. Uh, my guess on, on them was, um, uh, they just they can be kind of dark but at the same time uh they can't be it's like they like they told me uh, they only care about like i said did i say that they only care about um advancing their race and they could do that through experience and they would they would do something like stab you so they can understand what it is to stab somebody and then give you a knife and let you stab them so they would know what it's like to be stabbed you know they they can be kind of parasitic and cause um, cause situations with people so that way they can uh, further understand experiences they just uh, I, don't, I don't really understand them too much they, they said that it was like a, a biomechanical race that was created and um, their creators went extinct and so they just been kind of like roaming the earth going on I'm roaming the earth Roman universe uh, trying to advance themselves and they got into a, a tricky a tricky situation there where uh, uh, they can no longer advance you know it's like they, they've mastered the universe to the point of uh, on, on a logical uh, sense of things a scientific sense of things but they realize that the only other way to um, further advance their race is by uh, being able to obtain a soul and they want to do that by crossbreeding their um, their DNA with with their DNA so that's where you get the the gray hybrid uh, a lot of confusion going on there I think about what those really are I don't think they're going to be taking over the world you know they um, uh, it's, it's just an attempt to try to uh, attain a soul so that way they, their race can be advanced even more because they hit like a uh, a brick wall without without it uh, as far as I understand them but uh, yeah they, they it's all it's, there's so many different different things and different personalities and stuff um, some of them some of them are like old men most of them are like old men they're like grumpy old men you know they uh, like the really old beings sometimes they can just be uh, like a just like a grumpy old man you know <laughs> kind of like they, they treat 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 you like a like you're a child and and uh, uh, you know everything and it's kind of like uh, they're frustrated about how how, uh, how and seemingly irritated about how young we are you know uh, yeah they, they was, they're always calling me little one anyways yeah totally totally different personalities on them well in conclusion, I think that um, I think he meant I think we're we're we got the event coming. 
but there's more to it than just that. You know, that's almost like, um, it's almost like an event that happens on all timelines. It's it's how we get to there. Whenever that event happens, I, don't, I have no idea. It could be, it could be hundreds of years from now, as far as I know. But everything leading up to it, there's there's other things involved. Um, humanity does seem to be at a at a turning point in our own evolution. Where, I mean, we're we're destroying this world, and uh, you know, we're all running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off, trying to figure out what the hell is going on here uh with everything you know just wars brewing up you know and people killing everybody it's just ugly out there the world has gotten ugly people getting mad you know and everything seems like a um it's like vibration of aggression starting to come up it's like we're going through this transition where um either we change or we go extinct and it's not going to be by it's not going to be by whatever it says, the greys and the hybrids killing us off. Or we're going to kill ourselves off. We're going to destroy our planet and kill ourselves off is what's going to happen if we don't change. And so I think a lot of this has to do with that and this, this turning point. I also think, too, that, uh, <laughs> you know, they're the scientists, we're the rats, right? Um, you know, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it seems like... Uh, we're just some kind of grand experiment and it's about time for that experiment to either uh, go forward and in, into the next stage of our evolution or or not you know and I think that um we're kind of there I think this has happened before I think this has happened before several times in in Earth's history and uh, and we keep failing and I think this is the last this is the last attempt that we have here um there's there's a lot of things going on like you said a lot of different uh, uh different problems like with this grand grand equation where you know you even got where uh all all the dimensions are the existing si simultaneously you know it's it's here <laughs> it's here right now these dimensions are here right now and they uh, uh they all exist on a on a different waveform you know yeah, but if you ever see, I don't remember the name of the thing, but you get a pendulum with different, you know, uh, lengths of string, and you pull it all at the same time, they all, you know, eventually they sync up again. And it's like we're in this point where, where the dimensions are all kind of, uh, the waveforms are coming to this um, synchronicity. So, you know, higher things are able to come through um, more so now. But it's all, it's all, you know, each being, each being kind of tells a different story about what's going on. Uh, I've been, I've been trying to figure it out, but, you know, there's so much, um, there's so much false stuff out there and uh, egos and beliefs and, uh, I don't know, I'm just kind of, I just shoot from the hip and trying to figure this all out like everybody else, I don't know. Uh, I just hope that it, I'm, I'm very afraid, I'm very afraid for all of humanity, afraid for myself, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to a good place here, uh, and it's not, it's, it's E.T., whatever those reptiles are, are trying to do, I, I don't know, I don't know why, why they're just trying to deceive people, um, it seems like maybe they're coming to the end of of their uh, ability to be able to influence us. Uh, so maybe they're, if not gone by now, uh, are going to be gone soon. Um, as far as the other beings, like the mantis beings, they kind of like um, more care about the rotation of planets than, than the day-to-day -day lives of everybody else. So they kind of seem to be more focused on the grand, the grand picture which is way beyond my ability to comprehend and uh, uh, it just seems like they're all here for a <laughs> I, I don't really know don't really know maybe we'll find out so oh yeah so I, I rem remember I remember getting the implants I was probably you know about five no wait five I guess. 
Maybe eight. That's five, six, six years old. Give or take. God, it was so long ago. I, was, I mean, I was a little, little, little kid when I got them. I remember being in school and he, uh, the teacher was reading a book about childhood cancer, and the the kid uh, discover, first discovered bumps in his mouth, and I remember freaking out and going, "Oh my God, I got the bumps in my mouth." Um, uh, I have cancer. I remember running my mom, Bob, I got cancer. She's like, no, 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 son. Everyone's got bumps in their mouths. Don't worry about it. You know, I <laughs> thought it was cancer for the longest time. I was convinced, <laughs> you know, <laughs> then you forget about them then you, and then you get older and all this shit starts happening and you're like, oh, oh, that's, so that's what they're for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've only had like a, a three three regressions. There's nothing that um, they would ever hide from me, uh, except for those that one, the, what I call the false light ones. But as far as in the regressions, the other ones go. There's never anything they, they hid from me or anything. There is there is one thing that I'm not, I won't talk about for uh, my own safety, but uh, yeah, yeah involving human stuff but uh you know don't go there right so um yeah I have the implants there's no no idea no idea what they are exactly i wish i knew wish i knew yeah when you were growing up did you have any sorts of dream of telepathic experiences or psychokinesis or terms of mental abilities psi abilities that were Expressed when you were going through your childhood did they express when you were going through your teenage years as these types of abilities are usually harder to control in the teenage years. Was there ever a time your life was in danger or close to danger somehow something intervened to stop it? Can you tell us about any of these experiences you've had? Any voice that redirected you to times of danger to save you? Do you remember any dreams that were significant that had a full emotion action intent reason? future and past everything formed into one Megan that was sent to you for understanding of an event or circumstance to teach you or to make you understand from these visitors or events, when you were in communicating either on the dreams or face to face with the Mandids were you communicating with your voice or mind to mind, with the mind to mind did you ever have a time the Mantis or Grey's Reptilians or others could be made unconscious any time when you looked them in the eye or has any time, they weren't able to control you, not overpower you with the mind to mind, when you were taken aboard the ships or transferred to an area, do you remember either in dreams or experience of a school or being thought or educated? Was there anyone else around you? What were the screen memories you remember? What did the place look like? Was there others around you like other people? Or aliens or alien who had the holographic screen on what age were you also? What did the school look like? What were you doing in that place and also what did you think they were trying to teach you? Any recurring dreams? In any particular place you have what was that place can you tell us about it and the dreams you had at that same place? Any specific object in your dream that was given to you and waking up with that object in your hand or coming across it later on in life? I, I, do, I do feel that they um, uh, not only caused it but I, I believe that they also had a hand in in uh, saving me. So at, at the time where the doctor told me I was... Uh, I was going to have to have a feeding tube put in me because I was dying for for some some unknown cause. Um, that's that it just went away one day, you know. So I, I do believe that they had a hand in in helping me. Uh, and and now that I I've, I've been I'm so connected now to things that yeah, there's definitely this uh, an inner voice that helps guide me through certain situations. Uh, um, mostly concerned with me taking better care of myself you know so it's usually pretty benevolent and um, tries to tries to help me out yeah you know uh, when I was growing up I didn't have much uh, things going on I do remember some things here and there the memories are kind of fractured up a little bit I know that when I was Oh, really young, probably about like five years old. My aunt, you know, recorded me telling stories, and I, you know, I come across this old tape, and it was me talking about how 
I used to hang out with giant grasshoppers in the backyard. You know, some weird, weird things, uh, you know, as far as ability wise as a kid, you know, uh, I would see things like flying across the room and, and, uh, closet doors opening and closing, but ability wise, uh, I don't think I, w I was particularly the one doing these things, but, uh, I thought that it was ghost, you know, and come to find out years later, it was, uh, extraterrestrials, but looking back now, uh, ability wise, you know, I, I would say that I did, I was a weird kid. I, I, you know, had this, uh, really big imagination that, you know, I was kind of, uh, bullied for. So, you know, ability wise was kind of, uh, uh, suppressed because of that. I was also diagnosed with ADD when I was younger and was prescribed R Ritalin and then, later on uh antidepressants so i was just a, a a chemical zombie growing up so any ability i had was then was completely doled out by by medications and was extremely discouraged by you know people around me you know that oh you know just you know it's just your imagination you know none of this is real you know and um you know being a i was a twinless twin so my my twin identical twin passed away. I'm not too sure exactly of the, uh, um, the details on that, but, uh, I always thought that it was my twin's ghost that was, that was originally doing all this stuff to me. Uh, it wasn't until later, like 2009 is when I became aware that these things were happening to me and that they've been happening for a, a long time. So nothing really relevant uh, that I can remember too much when I was a kid. Uh, now the abilities kind of started kicking in when, after the interactions started getting really intense in 2009. So I'd be about 29 years old at the time. And, uh, uh, it, it's, how do you, just, how do you explain it? It's like, it's like, uh, one of the main side effects I would say is it's like a connection with nature. You know, you can feel everything. You feel the life force and everything. And you can, I can kind of like see the way, um, uh, let's, let's just call it, let's just call it uh, quantum strings that interconnect everything together. And I can kind of, I can see where these quantum strings kind of uh, flow through space and time and, and can kind of like see where things are going uh then there's been like uh some healing stuff i have had uh, when when it first started I, I was very sick you know i went from 210 pounds to um, so, for, sorry, I went, I went from 200 and uh, 215, 210 pounds to about 113 pounds. You know, I was really sick, um, which I believe was a direct result for having these insane experiences at that time. I said I was going through some sort of uh, transformation, extreme transformation at the time. So it was hard for my body to handle handle it. Uh, and I was having physical contact, so is there some kind of, uh, oh, I hate to use the word radiation, but there's, there is a type of, like, uh, uh, thing going on there when you're in the physical presence of higher dimensional beings. Uh, when it comes with communicating with the beings, it is a, um, it is a psychic connection. There's, I've heard them, I've heard them, uh, make sounds before. They make like clicking sounds. Um, if, if, see if I can do it. It's kind of like a, and so it's like these clicks, right? And, uh, other than that, all, all communication is, is definitely through the mind. Uh, a lot of the times it is just voice, you know, uh, definitely it's like, um, it's like a powerful voice outside of your own uh, 
uh, and you hear it inside of your head, you know, uh, separate from your own thoughts. It, it was kind of difficult at first for me to be able to separate my own thoughts from theirs during communications, but uh, I think I kind of got the hang of it. Uh, they, like I said, they do use words, but they also do like they give you images, right? So they'll a lot of the time they'll they'll speak with images. So instead of them like trying to explain something, they would just show it to you. You know, if, like if you wanted to, um, uh, if I was trying to understand the nature of reality or the nature of, of uh, universe, time, space, uh, how other dimensions work, they they give you to you in in uh, images, and they kind of show you like a like a, a, a movie reel playing out through your head so you can, you can get a uh, grasp on what it is uh, they want to show you. Uh, they are able to control you to, to some degree. Um, uh, as far as like, you know, you, you walk out of bed and you're just walking out into the back room uh, you know, to the back, to the backyard's door for no reason, you know, like, I don't know, or like, um, one time I, I, I just remember this, I swallowed a, a toothpick, my, my wife made jalapeno poppers, bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers, and you put a toothpick in there, and I, you know, uh, it's a little tiny, the nubs burned off, so it's a little piece of wood like that, and I remember just cramming them down my throat, and I swallowed a, a toothpick, and I thought, oh shit, that's going to be a problem. I hope I pass that. Well, that night, uh, one one comes in. I see one mantis coming through the door, and then these little gray guys. I call the gray guys. A uh, uh, friend of mine dubbed them goloids. Um, they are not like a, not like a typical gray. They're like a, a biomechanical robot. So that way, uh, the mantis beings could transfer, put their consciousness into these little guys. So that way, they they can have a interaction with with you. As far as, as I think, that's the way that goes. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's the way that goes down. So you have the mantis being at the back, and then you have the little gray um, goloid sitting next to the bed, and you hear, "This is going to feel really weird." And the thing puts its hand somehow, like goes into my stomach, right? And I it's like, whoa! You feel this like roller coaster feeling, you know? It's like whoa, this overwhelming feeling of a hand going into your stomach. And I snapped out of the paralysis that I was in, you know, because you, you know, I'm laying down, and you just kind of like your whole body stiffens out, and you know, uh, and I g grab the thing, I grab the thing right here. My thumb goes in its mouth, and my hand goes around its neck like that and I you know I grabbed its face and it was like chewing on my finger I can feel it like kind of gumming me and uh really soft butter butter soft skin you know it's like um it's like I don't know how to describe it butter smooth oh I can't I can't think of anything compared to anyways the mantis the mantis being puts its arms up like this right and next thing I know is I'm I'm in dream world and I'm frolicking through uh, a, a field of poppies, you know, and black out. <laughs> the next day, wake up like, oh god, that was that was really really weird. So yeah, they do they do have the ability to uh, um, to control you for sure. I think they also have the ability to implant images in your head. So uh, you know, like I was saying, the mantis being put me in a frolicking through fields, but you know. Also had two where um, uh, they make you see things that uh, differently, you know. Um, especially with like the the, the reptiles, um, but I don't think that's in the mind. They have a technology that gives them like a, a holographic um, overlay. So it's not like a shape shifting lizard or a mind projection that you're seeing a um, a, a person with. Um, you know the blue jumpsuit and gorgeous. It's it's a it's a um, holographic technology of sorts. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's all it's all uh, it's all in the mind with the communication though. Now the one the one main memory that I that I have um, of is like kind of my first in my first 
encounter being on a, on a craft and uh, the, the craft is like you know like it's like like I said like a dome I was uh, taken up and I was inside of like this dome and there's a view screen in front of me and the being says uh, hey come here I want to show you something so I go to you know I go to look and I, I see I was kind of like uh, airplane level above above the valley where I live and I see the northern lights on the ground it was like a, a reddish oranges 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 <laughs> orange <laughs> light on the ground like uh, the northern lights but uh yeah, it was on the ground. And I remember freaking out. You know, oh my God, it's the end of the world. And being said, oh no, you know, it's tall, what some people would call a tall white Zeta, right? And uh, the mantis comes in and says, hey, you know, follow me into the, the back. And I go down this hallway into another room. And that's where I see this, like, you know, I've, and I've seen this table a, a few times. It's like, it's like a mushroom, a crystal mushroom with a flat top and around this oval the oval flat top and around it it's like this some kind of copper metallic rim going around it and the mantis being would would tap the this black like crystal looking thing and it reverberate and then you would see this perfect holographic image of our um, uh, solar system and I remember just I mean we're talking perfect just absolutely perfect perfect um uh holographic image of our solar system and they you know they kept going hey hey man pay attention <laughs> this is the you know, what you're looking at is, isn't important what we're trying to tell you is and they zoomed out and they they showed me this kind of like comet looking like thing coming in right and they said that um this was uh this was going to be a, a rock coming in. I was like, oh my God, we're going to be hit by a comet. And they said, no, 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 calm down. Uh, they said that it's a, this rock's going to be coming in, um, you know, from out deep in space. It's going to be, it comes in, it goes around the sun, and then it goes around the earth, and then it drifts back off into space. And humanity will think that, oh, this is unique, and there'll be some excitement about it. But then, um, uh, you know, it was just a rock to most people, but it wasn't. And they said that it was a, a some sort of it was a ship that they sent out a long time ago to, you know, prepare for kind of like to help out. It's supposed to be like a, uh, uh, like a like the jet ski towing in towing in um, a, a surfer on a big wave. So you know the event that they showed me was the wave that hits Earth, and then uh, this little. The ship they sent out connects all these different uh, unknowingly to us because this is happening on another the 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 rock itself being physical but what it's doing is it's not working on on um, our dimension so we perceive it as just a rock but it wasn't um, anyways it, it connects from galactic because the event the wave comes from galactic center you know explain that later it's because our, our galactic center wakes waking up and it burped like 20,000 25,000 years ago um, and that energy is now coming here so this thing was to connect all the portals to the earth to the sun and then to the earth because the wave you know affects the sun and the planet it kind of rings us like a bell um, but it, that, that thing's with else you talk about a trip when years later my buddy tells me you know, because I was I talked about this years ago, uh, and then my buddy goes, "Hey, bro, have you seen about this uh, Amuamua thing they discovered?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh shit!" The panic attack I had when I was like, "Oh, oh, that's real." Oh shit! So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the the sh the ships are kind of like they're kind of boring. They're kind of boring on the inside. You know, there's there's nothing exciting going on there. Uh, some some really cool stuff, but it's just like you know an empty room with a with a table in the middle of it. Uh, nothing nothing ever too cool going on. Although I've had like a, a under an underground facility type thing where there was just like uh, these these beings walking around, 
uh, it's like computers on the on the um, uh, looking things on on the side of walls and stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. It was interesting. It's been interesting. I haven't I haven't been um, uh, had any reoccurring dreams or anything like that or any kind of object given to me. I have been given some designs to to create certain certain things of a of a sacred nature that I can't uh, really talk about. But uh, yeah, as far as physical objects, no, I haven't I haven't been given anything or haven't had any kind of uh, reoccurring dreams either. I mean, I've, I've had a recurring dream of like flying in an airplane, uh, but that's that's about it. It's not not a not important at all. As as far as like dreams go, I really don't I really don't dream that much, honestly. Um, any dream that I have, uh, it's usually kind of abstract and really short. Uh, there have been a a handful of dreams. In the in the span of like, what I'm in my hat now, uh, 12, 12 years, twelve thirteen years or so, uh, interacting with them, and I've only had dream wise. Usually the interaction is is face to face or or some kind of physical experience, but dream wise, uh, a couple, just a couple. Uh, one major, I would say one major dream that really helped me out would be a um, I was supposed to go to this event. It was just a uh, a gathering with some with some friends that I was making at the time, and uh, I wasn't I wasn't planning on going at all. And so that night, well, that day when I was on I was on the phone with my friend, a uh, giant praying mantis crawled up. Uh, the the in earth insect was crawling up me, and I was like, oh boy, that's a sign. Like maybe I need to go. That night, I end up having a dream where um, uh, I was I was supposed to go to I was supposed to go to something, some kind of event, and there was these two two platinum wolves, right? Like their their fur was was platinum, and they were growling at me and kind of like convincing me that I had to go. So when I woke up, I decided then like, okay, you know, I'm going to go to that event if I because I went to that, um, I'm talking to you now, you know, so this, that was the event that pushed me to, um, meet the people that, that got me involved with, um, with being public, you know, which, which I was not too big of a fan of, but, um, it ended up working out for the better, and, um, uh, uh, being public got me in touch with a lot of people that really helped me out. Uh, help me get through this this um this experience without feeling so alone you know <music>